Welcome to Grit and Gravitas with Anne and Annie, bringing you savvy, spirited stories of success. We're excited to deliver 30 minutes of inspiration, impact, and goodness. We'll be bringing you guests and friends from around the country who have very special work and personal journeys. I'm Ann Dieter Gallagher, your co-host with Annie Carnathan, and this is Grit and Gravitas. Let's go. Welcome to Grit and Gravitas. Again, Annie Carnathan, here we are, episode 12. Can you believe it? We are rolling along, girl. (laughs) Yes, and we seem to not be running out of topics, so that's a good thing. We have a, uh, a very good topic today. I mean, it's a meaty topic. It's meaty. It's going to continue to evolve. Yes. Right? As long as we are all in our day jobs. (laughs) <laughs> and it's extraordinarily important. It'll go by in a breeze. And, and again, based on the feedback we get, we want to sort of do what's next. Right. Uh, and uh, today the topic is opinions. And this touches on in our personal space, our personal lives and our professional lives and our servant leadership lives. So wherever we serve for nonprofits, opinions and our capacity to be honest about those. Well, and think about it. What are you worth without your opinion? And you can only go along to get along for so often and and not be authentic. And when you consider that as a woman, that's a continually difficult cross to bear for many, many reasons. So we are always going to be simple not easy. Simple to say that, not easy to live that. There's a huge price to pay for authenticity. And we're not really in a culture right now that is excited to have everybody's opinions. So you're going to lead us off and touch a little bit about a work culture and the expectation of sharing your voice and being honest about opinions. And I'm in, uh, I'm leading uh, an independent family owned media company. I tell people with you're a big dog. Well, right. And uh, yes, big dog job and uh, very influential uh, female CEO leadership. Thank you. And, you know, essentially, I think as the years evolved again, and it's not just a family owned business, there's two families involved. Right, right. And the entire premise to that, when I got there, was, oof, this outsider. Had a reputation, had worked with them forever. Right. And so, oof, what, what, what the outsider? The outsider's going to make us corporate America. The outsider's going to do this. The outsider's going to do that. I spent two years wondering at all if I could do it. So there was a trust challenge in there when you came in. 100%. Because what you say and what you really want and the headwinds and the obstacles good word, and the ability to, to come in internally and say, wow, not only externally do we have to bring partners in, internally it needs an entire rebirth, reorganization, and so it's, it's sort of two things at once, and they're the two biggest things in the world to be. And then you look out and say, hmm, there's all these people with those two last names, and the evaluation has to come of are they competent? Yeah. Or are they here because the family-owned business is their job? Mm-hmm. And add... That many, many people, whether they started out as interns, whether they grew, whether they knew someone in the family, never worked anywhere else. My entire point of the corporate atmosphere, if you will, Mm -hmm. is the antithesis antithesis of an independent family business. So to me, I think there's something you could learn about a corporate, like they're doing really well. Right. Corporations. 
And so to me, it was the blended of both worlds. And that intent was everything. Because extraordinarily difficult battles. So what did you do that invited or made them feel comfortable enough to be honest about their opinions? First of all, did you ask for the opinions of the team once you came in and you adjusted to your new leadership? I think that grew. What really got everyone's attention is the sales part of it, the acquisition part of it. And that's always going to get the attention of any company. Because look, no matter how we slice and dice it, it's profit and loss, yeah. and, and, and money's coming in, and who's responsible for that? And there's money going back out, and who's doing the work there? Right. And when push comes to shove, you know, the competency, the risk, the linear attraction to revenue is 100% about who's creating it, who's bringing it in. But then if it doesn't run well, mm -hmm. if there's not a process, if you don't have highly, highly competent experts, not just to where media is going, you know, is, but where it's going, right. you saw this information age. Well, you know, data and information is going to change the world. It's sort of this thing called the internet. But when you were founded very successful, you know, in the mass realm of, of broadcast and, and television and radio and, and, and right. print and newspapers and business journals is a what, 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 right? Total transformation. And that's always pushing everyone off a cliff. So I think that, that, that again, the headwinds, the obstacles were extraordinary for someone you don't trust. How could you, right? That has to be earned. That has to grow. It has to evolve as well as your team whom you're trying to put into positions of growth yeah, and have a culture where they can express their opinions. Bingo. Right there. And I think that's a challenge for, for small business to which I would say you have got to make sure you create a culture where people feel honest and comfortable to share their opinions. On a small business level, one wrong decision will sink your ship. If you're a large corporation, you, you can uh, weave and turn and sustain a hit by, by someone who wasn't honest or didn't give you the, the best feedback. Small business, not so much. So you have to, on our level, as small as we are, <clears throat> I try to make sure that everyone understands if you withhold your honest opinion, it's a business disadvantage. You are harming us when you do that. It's not, you're not looking out for my best interest. If you have information that would lead me to make a different decision because you don't want to hurt my feelings. And that's often, you know, we both have families in our, in our uh, businesses and that's <clears throat> can muddy the water as well. But I try to, to everyone we work with, including all the vendors, you have got to be honest with me. I need your opinion. That doesn't mean I'm going to take the advice. And that at the, we talked about this earlier at the end of the day for, an entrepreneur or a small business owner, I, you know, rise and fall on my own sword. So I'm not looking to share the responsibility of that, and no one can but the business owner. But I need all the best intellectual insights and data that my team has. And you cannot create a culture where they're hesitant or afraid to tell you the truth. Oh, truth. T-R-U-T-H. So, Quick little story about that. Um, one of the most prominent CEOs of Central Pennsylvania was Derek Hathaway, and he was CEO of Harsco, right? International uh, firm. Deep, deep respect for him, um, as as did everybody. He has unfortunately passed away now. When I was in a uh, small meeting with him, just the two of us, and I was asking about executives. Uh, at the Fortune 500 level, and, and we were talking about that. One of his insights I will never forget, he said, executives have to surround themselves with people who will tell them the truth. And sometimes when there's a lot of zeros after the first number of the salary, it can muddy the water in telling the truth. So you have to have people in your orbit that will tell you the truth whether you want to hear it or not. Because that's really how businesses thrive on every level, small and big. Uh, if you have family members in your employ, 
you have family, you have two different families, you know, under your team of your past 50 employees now, correct? Correct. Uh, you have to create the culture and, and um, create opportunities that they will be gut-wrenchingly honest with you. Because that's how your business is going to grow and scale and thrive. And not based on their last name. Yes. Based on the competency. Yes. I am an assassin about the work. Right? And are they going to make the turn or not? Right. And if they didn't or they're not, I have absolutely, that's my jump off. I don't determine whether they stay employed in a different capacity. So, so really the driving engine of that was, I don't have much fear and all of that is betting on myself and I've never not succeeded in betting on myself. We talked about the huge setbacks I've had. I'm blessed to sort of go, what? Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that, but boom, I'll risk it all again. X amount. No, I love later. that. Your resilience is amazing. And that's, that's, I think, at the core. And my point is I'm going to give everyone every opportunity yep. to grow into yeah. the critical role they have on my team Good. if they're leaders. So they're called department heads. And I can't do my job. I'm not a micromanager. I'm a leader. And when I say my – when I'm the most harsh, I'm the most scared. And so when I say – here's the final decision and the way it's going to be on this partner. That's me saying the most linear attraction to that is, is income. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. Yeah. I'm going to make the call because to your point, it's not, a, it's not my business, but that has a direct impact and linear impact on me. And oh, by the way, I have a family mm -hmm. and I have the same responsibilities and obligations as anyone right. could to take care of, you know, to do my part, to take care of us today, you know, tomorrow and into the future. And so I have no fear of that. If I, you know, am going to, to sort of make the bacon, right. I'm going to determine how it's fried. The rest, the rest grow into that. I, I can't do what I do and we can't evolve. We can't innovate. We can't get there. And it's always a journey, never a destination. If all of these leaders don't rise to that, mm -hmm. it's impossible for me to, I mean, I'll get the credit and, and I've mentored, I've coached. I mean, I eat, sleep and breathe my leadership team. And at this point, I don't want to work with anyone other than these people. They have grown into. That's a great uh, testimony. I hope. I hope the entire team is this required listening at Universal Media. Well, they know it though. I That's the other thing about. I me. hope they're hearing all the tremendous kudos and trust that you have placed in them. But it doesn't negate the t difficult conversations, yep. up to and including. It can. It here's can. here's what I see. Here's where we have to go. Are you going to make the turn? Yeah. I'm going to always take care of you. It may or may not be in this capacity. Right. Here's. Here's the hoop. And I'm jumping with you. We both have to be in shape. Going to hold your hand. Going to sing Kumbaya. But that's 100% trust and culture. And that's not, that's not magical. Right. That's ridiculously hard work if you're going to have a meaningful relationship. And we talked about this. Mm -hmm. Personally, professionally. Servant-wise. Servant-wise, faith-based. Like, like you have to live it. So... <clears throat> Let's give some simple insights because these things, maybe executives are coming to the uh, business environment expecting this. <clears throat> I've had many, many conversations because we're in the communications business and challenged executives and said, but did you tell them? Do they know? Did you clearly communicate what the expectation is? You have clearly communicated what the end game is for revenue or for business or how many accounts you need and, and what you need to scale. Does everyone in your employee understand that you expect, first and foremost, honesty? Because that's how you collect the opinions and that's how you make decisions moving forward as a business. <clears throat> and a lot of people assume that and they have not said that to people. So the people that uh, we are growing with and bringing along with us, it's a very simple, it, it could be an email and it, it's better said in person. Just a reminder, even if you're going through the, the company offices, just, you know, a simple conversation. You do 
understand, you do remember that above all else, I expect your honest opinion, and that's what I've hired you for. I need, I need your honesty. I need your insights. We don't have all the answers. Uh, we surround ourselves with people that are smarter and brighter and more accomplished, and together we all grow. But I think, it's, I think we um, probably miss the boat sometimes in not reminding everyone on our team what we expect. Yeah, there's not a chance of that. And, and I am a, a relentless communicator. But again, and people have said you hold up a mirror and sometimes I don't look that good. And look, it's your mirror. And the bottom line is you either judge my intent and think it's for all the right reasons or you don't. Right. Which, which we can do any number of a myriad of yeah. things. I want people to be happy. And if it means growing a career at Universal Media, I'll do everything. I'll, I'll be, I'll go as far as they go. Not going to care more than they do, but I'll go as far. And that was a really important lesson for me to learn. I can't care more than people right, care. Right. And if you want to work there, it's a privilege to work there. And you can, right, if you've never worked anywhere else, go out and see what's out there. And I don't, I, I think you should do that yes, too. And it's not, totally. it's not a lifelong contract. Nobody owes anybody anything. Yes. We owe each other a relationship day in and day out. But if I had a dime for every time I said to someone, how would I know that? And got the answer back, what? Just assumed I you'd assumed, know that. Yeah. And you I need to go back to communication basics. I'm an over communicator. Clearly our chemistry in this show demonstrates that more than anything, but that's a blessing and a curse. And these things are best said in person because we, um, no, it, uh, this is another segue. Just last night I had a conversation with my youngest son and we were talking about email and he said, mom, if you send, no, we weren't talking about email, we we're talking about text. If you send a text with a period you know, A, B, and C is inferring from that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I think I'm communicating one way. And he said, no, it, it is inferred, whether it's a, a tonal quality they're inferring in a text. So these conversations are best said in person, where you can see my sincerity and you understand my expectation versus an email or a text. We think about content and how everyone, everyone is is consuming that content through their own lens. Yes, yes. I don't get yes. to leave me at the door <laughs> and go, oh my gosh, Ian, I should have known what you, but like I yeah. have to bring me with me. And that's what I say to people about their job. It's work. Guess what? You have to take you with you. The next place, yeah. if it's an internal issue, or something, is going to be work. There's only so many ways we can make it interesting and fun. No, no, it's work. <laughs> there are days when I go, woof, how did I get through this day? Yeah. And people said to me, oh, you're carrot and stick. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. And don't, don't put, don't back baby in a corner. Don't put me in a box. <laughs> carrot stick. It's that. So that implies I'm manufactured. Yes. That implies I'm saying, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. And, but, and then boom, right? Stick. No, no. I, I don't even understand that. But that's the sort of the spontaneity, the impulse. Right. Bottom line is I'm never going to be anywhere that people aren't comfortable, confident giving me their opinions. And if we don't use them, there's always going to be a why. It's just not going to be no dictatorship wise. No, no. Here's why. Right. Here's I ultimate I took everything into account. Blah, blah, blah. And now more than ever, I'm in my 11th year, I do ultimately what the team wants to do. I recognize, I recognize I'm bringing way more to this from a baggage standpoint, from my mind. Right, right, right. I need to be able totally. to say, if I'm going to make you self-sufficient when I'm finished, you have to start to live with the risk of decisions. And when these group things- Okay, wait, in, that's the bi business vitamin right there. <laughs> That's it. You have to learn to live with the risk of your decisions. Okay. I don't there want anyone there to agree is. with me. I'm not excited by that. I'm not interested by that. I get enough of me. <laughs> I get enough of me. I don't need anybody to just in a, in a blank way agree with me. But But the flip side of that is we have to have a tremendous relationship for anyone to call anyone's baby ugly for any reason. 
And we have to know the dynamics around that. And we have to know how to communicate with our audience. And we have to understand whether to put our foot in the gas, whether to love. I think I know now more than ever when I just need to let people alone. Like get, get this some air. Let this. Yes. Percolate. Let us think about this. And there's risk in every decision in these group think people at companies and that, that make group decisions. Well, guess what? When it works, they all take credit for it. When it doesn't, it's like, well, I don't know. I don't make that decision. Well, you know the Margaret Thatcher, whom I adore, <clears throat> one of her quotes was nothing, and I'm, I'm probably uh, botching this a little, nothing great was ever achieved by consensus. The end of the day, in business, you know, whether you're the CEO or uh, the business owner, the founder, the entrepreneur, there's only one person that will take responsibility. And that is as it should be. But we still expect honesty from the team. And I'm going to throw um, another challenge out there for we as women. I, I don't want to stereotype it. It's not everybody because you are <clears throat> you are a straight shooter. I think women uh, many times don't want to hurt someone's feelings. So we aren't honest. And we somehow want to couch it. And I've told the team, but that's not that's not good business. That's, that's not what you're paid to do. And that's not helpful. By you trying not to hurt someone's feelings, you may be causing damage to a relationship or you may be um, <clears throat> not letting us thrive because I'm missing a vital piece of information. That's really at the heart of communication. And I used to be very, very harsh, right? But it was my truth. Well, guess but you're refreshingly what? honest. Well, I but, know where but, I but stand. But that's nuance now, and I have again a thousand paper cuts to show for that. And sometimes they have been fatal. Sometimes I've really hurt people, and I just didn't go back and take the time and care to communicate properly. And now, so 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 if someone's shoes don't match, any do, do you like my shoes? They're like a well, you know, it's awesome. But what I would have thought about was this. And so very, very subtly, there's options. Yeah. And I love options. So my favorite quote, and I am a massive fangirl Eleanor Roosevelt fan for many, many reasons. I mean, <laughs> yes. Talk about like historical perspective, you know, what she was to her husband, how she was her own woman. I mean, I could go on and on. Right. And, and, the, and the standard bear quote from her is, no one makes you feel inferior without your consent. Yeah. And so when someone says to me, you made me feel this, okay, I shouldn't have that power. I should not be able to make you no, no. feel something. You should be responsible for your own feelings. And the only thing I want to make you feel is delighting you is to be Amy, you know, Murray's best yeah. part of your day yeah. is to, is to solely say, I'm going to be the wind beneath your wings today. And that's where I think a text, right? When I say someone, you know, across the country, good morning. When I send someone an article, when I, there's, there's nothing to it, except, right. you know, I'm thinking about you. You don't have to read it. You don't have to respond to me. I'm essentially saying that thought went through me and I thought of you and I just don't want to lose that. But we also discussed in Amy's episode how that changes the trajectory of someone's day. When maybe they're waking up, um, someone that you're ready to text is waking up to one of the biggest meetings of their year. And just knowing like, wow, Annie, someone at that level has been thinking to me, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to get in there and what if they didn't sleep the well? Yeah. What we never, ever, ever know what someone's story is the rest of the life they're bringing to their day. Yeah. And when I say after I wake up, the rest is up to me, you know, love many, trust few, always row your own canoe. And I think at times people are like, how can I help you? Like, yeah. like people want to be needed. I don't know how to tell them to do that. I don't really know. Now I know a lot more as life goes by how to need people, but I've never been great at that. And it's not that attractive, but I get it. I understand. And so what I really need to do as time goes by, and I do back to opinions, I say to my team, like, I can't do this without you. Right. This is not about me. It's about all of us. And when, 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 when we're doing like, presentation, um, run throughs and stuff. What delights me more than anything now is when my team says we, yeah, and it's a grocery retailer, it's a health insurance, it's an airport, it's a, 
uh, an entertainment um, company when they say that's complete and total ownership. And that's the culture you've created. That that's the risk that. when yep. saying, I have yep. ownership, I'm there to building that culture, that ability that I, it, it, it absolutely, I value more someone not agreeing with me. And I've learned the hard way how to do that. Yeah. Right. And please enlighten me because I'll never know it all. Well, and those types of insights and surrounding yourself with that type of honesty is what takes us to the next level. That makes us better leaders. That makes us more um, empathetic and understanding. And I think that's, we can't thrive without that. No, and when someone says, I want to be more like you, I said, well, then find more of me. Surround yourself yeah. with people who are going to give you the ability to fall, to right. skin your knee, you know, to hurt your wrist, to just stumble. And we, we know we, we, we can fall as many times as is not. You just have to get up one more time than that. And you need to find people, to your point, who are going to tell you the truth and help you back up. And do, are you safe doing that or aren't you? And there's a, to me, there's a way more gray than there used to be for me, but not really. It's the way I nuance it. But in my heart, I have to look at it a certain way and just do everything I can to get to that. I don't want to go through life unless it's doing meaningful work. And that's whether in my nonprofit work, whether that's for the clients. We, we work with clients who we love and believe in. We drank their Kool-Aid or we wouldn't invest 24-7 Couldn't making agree sure... More. Uh, that we're placing them right and we have the right nuggets to the story. So if if our team isn't honest with us, we cannot continue to do the most meaningful work You're at much possible. greater risk. Isn't that the irony? To make a decision, you're at tremendous risk. To not make it, you're at more risk. And now, you know, three grown sons and they have wives. You have three daughters-in-law. You have grandbabies. And and look look at that same element and yeah. philosophy for them. Right. Right. And so I think that, look, life is a sales call. You're not really ever going to get me to sit here without talking about the entire me. There's right. just not a lot of distinction between all of it. And it's, it's, it's not who I am. It is what I do, but I bring me to it. Yeah. You know, and that's the big difference. So Time in, is up. This is how crazy this <laughs> is, right? So in our uh, big table of, of business, for the women out there, we need your opinions. We need your honest opinions. Uh, it doesn't mean you hurt people's feelings with them, but you're just honest. Help us help you with the show. Yeah. Be honest. Yeah. Be constructive. What do you want to hear from us? What can we help you with? That's really the, the main centric mission mm -hmm. and premise with us. And what does that look like from your perspective? Because you and I sit here, you know, we're open, we're honest, we trust each other, we're sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly, and what, what can we help women with? And please, to do that, send it to people, help us help you. So our... No, you had the best business vitamin. What did we just say your business vitamin was? I have another one I'm thinking of. Well, go ahead. Let's give them two, right? Let's give our, our, our tribe two. Women, we, we hope you'll commit and join us to uh, starting from the minute you listen to this on, being honest about your opinions in your workplace, in your home life, with your family, with your uh, servant leadership positions. I think we can all go forward doing better and more purposeful work when we bring our honesty to the table. Be brave, be courageous, be honest. And have a high gear day while we're all doing that. Annie Carnathan, that 30 minutes flew by. I am better as always for chatting with you. Right back at you, lady. Love it. Thank you. Thanks for listening. It's our desire that these stories will bring energy, ideas, and fresh thinking that you can use today. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Instagram and have a high gear day.